Hi, I'm Ned, and I make games and game development tutorials. Today, I'm making a fun procedural candy cane material. It's made entirely in the shader graph. There's no code, custom functions, or even painted textures needed. I made this material in Unity 2020.1.17 F1 and URP 8.3.1. If you're using a different version, check the comments for updates. I have confirmed this graph works in 2020.2 and URP 10. Your workflow will just be a little different. To get started, set up your project to use the Universal Render Pipeline by downloading the package, creating a settings asset, and setting that as your active render pipeline in the project settings. Next, set up a little test scene and create a material for your candy cane shader. For now, I would suggest using a Unity capsule and sphere since they have the correct UV layout for our material. Create a PBR shader graph named Candy Cane, set your material to use this shader, and open the graph. First, let's create a stripe. We'll make one using a sine wave, using the U component of the UV node as the input into the sine wave. We'll create a single vertical stripe on our test capsule. Feed the output into an absolute node to get rid of negative values. Let's use this wave to blend two colors together. Create a base and stripe color property, and then a blend node set to overwrite mode. Blend the colors together with a sine wave as the opacity, and feed the output into the albedo field of the PBR master node. Let's add some settings to adjust the sine wave. A frequency property multiplied with the sine wave input causes multiple stripes to appear. An offset property added to the sine wave input adjusts the center of the stripe. A threshold property added to the sine wave output and fed into a saturate node increases the stripe's thickness. Finally, a tightening property used as an exponent on the entire chain adjusts the stripe's feathering or fall off gradient. Play around with all these properties in your material. Specifically, adjust the threshold and tightening values to achieve a broad stripe as well as a narrow line. Alright, let's create the iconic candy cane spiral. Back in the graph, we'll achieve this by multiplying the UV node's V coordinate by the wave frequency, and then adding that back to the U component. This sum is the new sine wave input. Immediately, you'll notice a nice spiral. However, turn the capsule around and there's a seam in the back. We can fix this by realizing sine waves have a period of pi. If we make sure the frequency is a multiple of pi, that gets rid of the seams. Create a constant node set to pi mode and multiply that with the sine wave input. Problem solved. Fancier candy canes have several stripes, so let's add support for four. First, select all these nodes, calculating the sine wave, and create a subgraph called sine stripe. Double click to open it, clean up the graph and rename the inputs and output field. Save the asset, then return to the main candy cane graph. Now set up several properties. Rename the stripe color to stripe 1 color, and create three more color properties for stripes 2, 3, and 4. Each stripe needs its own offset, tightening, and threshold values. To minimize inspector clutter, let's store each as a vector 4, where each component will store a specific stripes setting. Delete the old offset, tightening, and threshold properties, then create three vector 4 properties in their place. In the graph, Duplicate the sine stripe node three times. For cleanliness, let's use a vector1 node to route the frequency value into each of these sine stripe nodes. In Unity 2020.2, you can just use an elbow node. Next, create three split nodes to split the offset, tightening, and threshold vectors. Route the appropriate components to the appropriate nodes.
Now near the blend node, remove the old color field and move the node down next to the fourth stripe node. Route the fourth stripe output into the opacity field and blend between the base and stripe four colors. Feed the output of that blend node into the base field of another blend node, also in overwrite mode. Set blend to the third stripe's color and opacity as the third sign stripe node output. Continue this way for the second and first stripes until all the stripes are blended together. Finally, route the last blend node output into the master node's albedo field. Save the asset and test out the new additions. Challenge yourself to create a variety of different patterns. There are some ugly UV seams near the ends of our test capsule. This is unavoidable, unfortunately, but we can hide them by fading out to a solid color near the caps. Luckily for us, candy canes tend to look like this anyway, since their candy centers are a solid color. Return to the main graph, add a cap color property and two float properties to define how the material blends the cap color into the stripes. The cap gradient start is the V value where the cap color starts fading in, and the cap total start is the V value where the cap color is opaque. The easiest way to implement this is to construct a mask to use to blend the stripes over the cap color. First, get the UVs and use a split node to access the V coordinate. Use a smooth step node to create the top gradient. This node outputs a 0 if n is less than edge 1, a 1 if n is greater than edge 2, and a smooth curve otherwise. Perfect for our needs. We want the gradient to be 1, or white, where the stripes show through, so feed this into a 1 minus node. To make the bottom gradient, we need to invert the top gradient. Feed both properties into a 1 minus node, and then into another smooth step node. Make sure the edges are flipped from the previous smooth step node, so the total start value is edge 1. To combine both gradients, multiply them together. Then create another blend node in overwrite mode. Feed the gradient into the opacity field, the stripe colors into the blend field, and the cap color into the base field. Then input that into albedo. Save your asset. Alright, that looks much better. Next, let's add a little realism. Candy doesn't have perfect stripes like this. A little noise jitter to the stripes will fix that. I decided to use a noise texture for this, since it's more efficient and we can make it tileable. You can create such a texture in GIMP using a solid noise filter, setting tileable to true. Be sure to generate independent noise in the red, green, and blue channels since we'll be using all three. Back in Unity, uncheck sRGB and turn off compression in the texture importer. Back in the graph, add a texture property to hold the noise. Then, create a Vector2 property to scale the noise sample UV, and a Vector1 property to define the amount of wobble in the stripes. Use a Multiply node and a Sample Texture node to get the noise value. Remap the output so it ranges from negative 1 to 1. Then multiply by the amplitude property. Add this back into the UVs and feed that into the frequency calculation. Save the asset and inspect the result. Keep in mind, it only takes a very small amplitude to get the desired effect. But large amplitudes look cool too. Alright, so I'm happy with the color but we need to adjust the lighting properties so it looks more like candy. If you look closely at a candy cane, you can see faint ridges in the shine due to the way the candy is stretched and twisted. And once again, candy is not perfect, so we need to add some noise here too. We can model both of these effects by adjusting the normal vector used in lighting. We'll construct a normal vector from a height value, similar to how you'd use a bump map. The shader graph has a handy node for that purpose. Let's get started by creating the stretch ridges using a sine wave. We want the stripes to be more frequent than the color stripes, so add a frequency multiplier property. Multiply this with the stripe frequency, then tau, which is 2pi, 
and put that into a sign node. Next, let's add in roughness with more noise. Create a normal noise UV scale property and multiply that with a UV node. Feed the output into a sample texture 2D node with the noise texture. Then remap the blue component to range from negative 1 to 1. To prepare to combine the two normal vector sources, make a normal stripe strength and a normal noise strength property to have individual control over their relative strengths. Multiply the properties by their appropriate values. And add both products together. Now that's ready to feed into the normal from height node. To control the strength of the normal adjustment effect, make an overall normal strength vector 1 attribute. And use a normal strength node to apply the scaling factor. Multiply this with the cap gradient so the normal does not suffer from UV seams. Since this vector is a displacement to the actual normal vector, use a blend normal node with the model's normal vector to compute the final vector. Feed that into the normal field of the PBR master node. Make sure it's just the normal field, not the vertex normal field. And then double check that the normal from height node, normal vector node, and normal field in the PBR master node are all in matching space. I'm using tangent space here. One more small thing before we test out the material. Add a smoothness vector one property and feed that into the smoothness field on the PBR master node. Now you can adjust how shiny your candy is. We're ready to save the asset. Play around with the material now. It takes a bit of tweaking to balance the normal properties, but with some work it will look really good. Now I just feel like I need some hot chocolate and Christmas music and I'm all set for the holidays. If you'd like to create a more complicated mesh for this material, it will work out of the box with anything as long as the UVs are set up correctly. The stripes wind around in the U direction and up in the V direction. The caps appear where V is 0 and also where V is 1, so try to put any seams in those areas. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and turn on notifications. I upload weekly game development tutorials, and I'm sure more procedural materials are in the pipeline. I'd also appreciate it if you could like this video. It lets YouTube know to recommend it, and it really helps out the channel. Of course, please don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have any questions. What type of procedural material would you like to create? Is there any other topic you'd like to see me make a video about? Thanks again for watching, and make games.